Okay, so I'll try to do an explanation of a uh, little anatomy of LISP because that's very helpful in figuring out what LISP does. So we'll have two parts. One, I'll try to explain to you, first of all, this whole issue of Kant cells and how lists actually are represented, at least conceptually, in the memory. And the second part that we want to talk about is how the evaluator works. What does it do actually so that you're no longer surprised at the quoting and unquoting, etc. And then uh, this is like the anatomy lecture of the list. And then we'll get back uh, later on to talking about uh, specific things such as the project code in, in a different one. Okay. And since I'm just uh, copying this for the first time, um, uh, rather recording this for the first time, um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, so we'll see how this works. Anyway, so uh, look at the um, cancel picture here. So first let's start with what is an atom in LISP. Uh, so an atom uh, in LISP essentially is a, you know, sort of a structure, um, you know, in a memory where you have the print name of the atom, a value of the atom, and a separate thing called the function value of the atom, and then a third thing called the property list for that atom. Now, the interesting thing is that um, unlike in scheme where a thing, a value, I mean a, a symbol can only have either a normal value or a function value, just one value, in common list actually you wind up having two different values. Um, the value of the symbol itself as well as the function value. To see that this makes sense, notice this, okay. So, for example, let me say, you know that, um, um, let's, let's do this, set q my fun equal to 3. So, now my fun has the value 3. And then I also do the fun my fun x y plus x y. Okay. So, now notice that I have two different values for my fun. Um, so, depending on how it gets evaluated, if it's evaluated for its function value, it will act as a function. If not, it will act as its value. Um, so, for example, if I say my fun, I do get 3. And if I say my fun um, 3 and 4, I will get 7. Okay. The reason this makes sense, I am not asking you to actually ever have a, f a symbol which you know represents both a function and and a value but you need to understand how common list works and so it does have these two different slots okay now the way you get the so for example if you want to get the functional value of my fun then there is a way of doing that so for example if you want to set j to be the value of my fun you just do value of my fun okay so now j is 3 if on the other hand you want to set my j to be the functional value of my fun, there is this sharp quote macro. There is this sharp quote macro, this right here. And if you do that, then j will now be set to the closure function. Notice that my function is a closure. So functions are represented as a closures in common list. So in essence, j now remembers, uh, j now is pointing to the functional value of my fund. Now, we'll see in a little later that now j actually can be used to reach that functional value. So, if you say fun call, which is a way of calling functions j on numbers 5 and 6, you should get 11. Okay. So, that's basically to just show that an atom is really has both a value and a function value. It also has something called a property list and we'll talk about that later as needed. The other thing is how do lists behave? So really lists are made up of what are called con cells. A con cell, you can think of it as like basically a domino, two domino pieces joined together. Okay. So, and then you can put a pointer from here and you can put a pointer from there. Okay. So for example, if I have just have a list with one element A, then that's really nothing but a pointer to this con cell here, where this con cell really has the first pointer is pointing to the symbol A in the memory, uh, which is basically could be this atom here. And then the second is pointing, is basically is showing that is the end of the list. So, you know, it's like pointing to a null pointer. 
So we'll just put an earth thing, you know, you know, conceptually we'll put an earth thing here. So similarly, if I now have a list with an element B, so that's basically a separate concept. So when, you know, let's say I say P equal to list A, then set QP equal to list A, then P is now pointing to this whole concept. And similarly, Q equal to uh, and set Q, Q list B, then I, Q would be pointing to this console here, where then the first cell of this console is pointing to B, and second cell ends in the earth. Okay. Now, when I essentially append these two lists together, essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this pointer here and pointing it to here. That's it. Okay. So appending the two lists above will get me a new list which has two consoles, where the first console's second part is just showing to the second uh, second console. Okay, um, and then when you do car and CUDA, really what you're doing is car basically gives you the pointer in the first cell of the console, and CUDA is just giving the pointer of the second cell. That's all it's doing. Okay, now in this case, CUDA of the second cell will just give you nil because you know there is second cell is best pointing to null. Okay, whereas if I do CUDA of this cell, so I have a pointer to this whole list here, right here, and then car of it would be the pointer A, and coder of it is basically this pointer. Now, this pointer happens to be essentially the list B. Okay, so that sort of removes you know the surprise about what's going on. And by the way, car and coder are really also used as first and rest in Lisp. Um, if you are interested, the reason it's called car and coder is in the old old days when there was this IBM 794 I think is a computer it you has to it used to have a large byte size and then the first part would be called the car and the second part would be called the coder anyway so that's your appending now one interesting part is nothing give as long as I have a console you might wonder why can't I have pointers from the kind both cells to be to symbols right I can do that so for example I can say a dot cell essentially would um, essentially take, um, you know, put a pointer to A and a pointer to B. Okay, so in that case, essentially, if I do car A, I'll just car of this list, I'll get A. Coder of this list, I get B. Okay, so to see this, look at this. If I to get a dot product, I'll say set Q dot cell to be cons of a and B. So I get A dot B. Now car of dot cell is A. Cuder of dot cell is B. Notice that normally you tend to think Cuder is always a list. That's not true. Cuder is just the pointer to the second part of the console. And if that's actually pointing also to a list, so be it. Okay. So now you can also say uh, interesting things like um, Suppose I do, uh, so normal cell would be set Q uh, normal cell cons of A to list B. That would be AB. Okay. Now if I do car of normal cell, I get A and I get cutter of normal cell, I get B. Okay. By the way, as long as I'm here, there are some special uh, commands at the interaction at the um, you know Lisp cell that you should know. Star will always give me you know, the last thing that is returned. So suppose you just ran a very time-consuming function and you forgot to remember the value returned by that function in some variable. Don't worry. So in fact, if you want to, for example, remember this value in some function, I can always do it by just saying set you uh, last result and just say star. So star will always be bound to the very last thing that is returned. And similarly star star is bound to the second to last thing and star 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 is bound to the third to last thing that is returned. Okay, so that's just a useful thing to remember. Okay, so that's about, that's about um, the cons cells and you should be able to play with this understanding to under, you know to get a feel for what actually happens when you are combining lists. Uh, one other thing 
about the cells is destructive versus non-destructive operations. So the idea is that in general, in general, um, if you, for example, uh, do destructive operations, what that means, uh, non-destructive operations, what they mean is they copy the con cells that you provide them before doing the operation you want to do on them. Whereas destructive ones essentially just take the con cells and modify the pointers. The problem with uh, destructive ones, is the, the advantage of the destructive ones is that they are actually space saving because they are not generating new con cells all over the memory. But the disadvantage is that you can get into trouble because something that you are pointing to has actually been modified by somebody else later on and so suddenly your result gets modified. To understand this, look at this here. Okay, um, nconc is actually a destructive operation. So let's do this. Set Q first list is A, B, C. Okay. And then set Q second list is 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now set Q my result to be and conk first list second list it looks like a b c one two three right fine now suppose you went and set queued a cell to be so basically what you did was you changed the sl pointer by actually uh, adding an extra value to it. Okay, so let's say set QSL to be nconc SL followed by mu. So now SL is now pointing to 1, 2, 3 nu. Now, the way you conceptually think now is that you just change SL, result should still be same right if you look at result <laughs> notice that result also has a new in it why because the way the operation occurred when you combine these two destructively is that you took the last pointer from the last cancel of this and pointed it to this okay and then when you did nconc on sl essentially what you wound up doing is you kept the pointer and for the last cell here, instead of it being earth, it just now is pointing to new. So what happened now is everybody who was pointing to SL are now affected. And since NCONC previously was pointing to um, SL, now it's now suddenly instead of one, two, three, has one, two, three new. So you should be careful about destructive operations because your intuitive way as to how the program is working would not necessarily uh, square with the way the actual program is working. So when in doubt, at least in the beginning stages, when in doubt, if you are thinking uh, that there is a uh, funny thing happening somewhere, you can always generate an entire list, copy an entire list, okay, and that would take care of these problems. So there is this function called copy list. So if you say set Q SSL copy list. SL. Okay, so now SSL is actually a copied version of SL. Okay, so if I say SSL is one to three new. Now even if I change SL, so if I say set Q SL to be and conk up SL and another new thing. So SL now has one more new thing, but SSL hopefully won't have that because it's been copied okay so many operations in list you know are non-destructive and many are destructive and when possible try to use non-destructive operations uh, in the beginning stages uh, if you are smart and if you are a master programmer in list you can use not destructive operators thereby saving space a lot okay so that's about destructive versus non-destructive operators okay now the last thing I want to tell you today is how the programs are evaluated in LISP. 
and for that you know you should look at this evaluator uh, picture here um, so the this is also available uh, from the class page evaluator.jpg okay so here is basically the way the evaluator works um, in in a list in the when you are sitting in front of the evaluator everything you know evaluator is trying to evaluate anything you, you throw at it okay so if i give it a uh, an x expression an s expression can be either a list or an atom okay so the s expression is a list or an atom okay and so if i give an s expression at the evaluator and that happens to be an atom the first thing it tries to see is if that atom has a value okay so if it has an atom as a value here then it will just give you the value back so for example ssl is an atom and it has a value because i set the value to be 1 2 3 I mean, to the, the pointer to this list 1 2 3 new so when i say ssl i'll get 1 2 3 new whereas if i say tyr then i will get a uh, failure because essentially tyr there is a symbol called tyr which is basically undefined as of now because it has no value okay so in that case it will just give you a value i mean it will just give you an error okay so that's about that okay so that's the first part if it's a if the s expression is an atom then if its value cell has a pointer return the pointer if not uh, then give an unbound variable error now what happens if the s expression is not an atom if the s expression is not an atom then uh, it really is a normal s expression that means it's a list of things and then so the first question is is the car of the s, s expression a valid function that's what you need to check okay so so for example um, if i give uh, um, scudder ssl then what it's basically doing is uh, what it's basically doing is that um, it's taking uh, the first of this s expression which is cdr cdr is a symbol which has a function value cdr is a symbol which has a function value okay so evaluator then basically takes that function and applies it to the evaluation of ssl in fact the way the evaluator works is first it takes the arguments evaluates all of them and then passes their values to the function value of the first element okay so if the car of s expression is a valid function then evaluate the elements of the cdr of the s expression and pass the values to the function and then return what the function returns that's what you do okay now there are certain normally evaluator evaluates everything it sees right except there are special forms which will stop the evaluation one special form you know is quote function so any any function which does not evaluate its arguments is called a special form okay so quote is one such function quote uh, kqp will just give you kqp back because it essentially doesn't evaluate okay and uh, a shorthand notation for code kqp is just the kq put a code kqp by the way the way this code actually so in fact lisp when you write code kqp at the reader then lisp evaluator really gets this a function called code kqp and this is done by changing the what's called reader macros and you know that's a sort of an advanced topic in lisp in fact you can change the complete syntax because when it when it reads a character such as a quote then it can actually instead of reading that in it can read the you know parentheses big and quote and then read the next and then put that there and then end the bracket okay and which is then sent to the evaluate okay so that's about the normal functions okay um one of the interesting things of course is sometimes it in fact you would think that you would think that uh, the only way the functional forms are evaluated is the first thing is a valid function and one way something can be an valid function is it has it's an atom and it has a function value another way it's a valid function is that essentially it's a lambda expression so here is an interesting thing a lambda expression is just a nameless function lambda xy okay rather lambda x lambda x let's say 
and all you do is you want to return plus x and y. So this is the nameless function which takes value x and adds 1 to it and returns it, right? And if I then add, put 8 here, this will actually just return me 9. And the reason this works is evaluator sees the car of this whole list and the car of this whole list is a lambda expression. The car of this whole list is a lambda expression. Okay, and so then it's a function essentially. It's a named nameless function, and then it evaluates the it evaluates the uh, arguments. In this case, eight. You know, all these numbers like eight are symbols which have also as their value the number eight. Okay, so then it evaluates eight, gets the number eight, and then it sends it to this lambda expression, which is a function, and then it evaluates uh, you know x plus one, and then it returns nine. Okay. So then, so basically, the extracting the value functions. If it's an atom, then then you look for the function value slot of the atom. If it is a um, lambda form, so basically the function value slots basically store function closures or the lambda forms. A function really is a lambda form. If not, if car x is a function, fun call or apply or a lambda function then you essentially do again act like you act like their functions okay um, now f there are special kinds of function called fun call which essentially can be used to apply a named function to certain arguments so for example fun call i can say um, car on the list one two three okay and i'll get one I can even do set q j equal to car. Okay, now fun call j one two three one. Okay, so fun call basically takes the value of j and then looks for the function cell of that essentially. Okay, so we will stop here for today. You should have an idea essentially of how uh, fun call works, um, no, sorry, how, how the evaluation works in Lisp, okay, and how the lists are um, stored in Lisp, okay. Uh, one other function like fun call is apply, and you know, apply also takes the value of, it basically takes a, a function and then applies it to the CDR, so basically applies it to the rest of the things. So, um, for example, I can do fun call, I think, let me see, fun call plus 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 rather, okay, fun call plus 1, 2, I'll get 3 because plus is just added between 1 and 2, okay. So, we'll stop here for now and then, uh, in fact, this will also give me a chance to see if this recording is working and then if it's working, I will, you know, put up more things like this later on, okay.